Now that we have alternating series under our belt, let's take a look at different sign patterns. So let's consider this series. Sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, minus 1. And this kn function is just going to be the remainder of n when we divide by 3. Okay, and then 1 over n squared. So if I throw away the sign stuff, the 1 over n squared is going to lead to a convergent series. Okay, if I take a look at what happens, we start with a minus, plus, plus, minus, plus, plus. So definitely not an alternating series. All right, but like I noted, the 1 over n squared converges. So can we work with this? Definitely. So this is going to lead us to our next test for series, absolute convergent test. So what that's going to say is, if you take your series, you throw away any signs that show up, if that series converges, then your original series is going to converge. So to check the convergence of this thing, I can just cover that up and I just ask, does the series for 1 over n squared converge? Yes, it does. Then whatever I put in here, that's going to converge also, as long as it's just plus or minus signs. Now note, here a sub n is not necessarily positive, so our sequence, we're going to combine the minus signs into it. So what I'm going to have is, I'm going to start with b sub n, which is just the nth term of the sequence plus its absolute value. We also have that the series of the absolute value of a sub n converges, so let's say that, that sum is equal to s. I'll need that later on. All right, getting back to b sub n, let's note some things. a sub n is positive or equal to 0, then it's just going to be equal to its absolute value. Absolute value says if there's a sign, throw it away. So in this case, b sub n is just going to be equal to twice absolute value of a sub n. If a sub n is negative, then what are we going to do? Well, then that says you could take the absolute value put the sign on. So what is taking the absolute value do? Throws a sign away. If your number's negative, well then, you take the absolute value, you just replace the sign, you get back what you started with. In this case, we're adding a negative to a positive with the same magnitude, so we're going to get a zero. What just happened? Well, my sequence b sub n is going to be between zero and twice the absolute value of a sub n. The series for zero converges, okay, that's just adding zero to itself infinitely many times, that's going to be zero. And then this is just going to be two times the series for absolute value of a sub n. So I can pull the two out of the series, and then we know absolute value of a sub n, the series associated to that converges by assumption. So a convergent series on the outside, so direct comparison test says the thing on the inside has to converge also as a series. So let's call the sum for this series b. Now I just want to pull things apart. I have the partial sum for the b series. Okay, remember that's a n plus the absolute value. Take the partial sums. We're just going to sum a1 plus absolute value a1 plus a2 plus absolute value a2 all the way up to this term equal to partial sum for a par nth partial sum for absolute value of a. Okay, that's just writing out the definition of each term in here. So I'm just going to take the difference, moving one of these to the other side. I'm going to have partial sums for A is partial sums for B minus partial sums for absolute value of A. Take the limit of both sides. This is the thing that we're interested in, the partial sums for A. Okay, we know the partial sums for B converges to B. Partial sums for absolute value of A are going to converge to S, and so the partial sum for a, its limit is going to go to b minus s, which is a number, which means the series associated to a sub n is going to converge also. And that's our conclusion here. So if you can get it to converge by throwing away the signs, then it'll converge with the signs. Okay, example. All right, I'm going to take 1 over n squared as my a sub n. We could throw on any sign pattern you want. I have no idea what this sign pattern looks like, but by the absolute convergence test, all I need to do is cover that up. I know that the series for 1 over n squared converges, so now this thing automatically converges without actually having to write anything down. The absolute convergence test leads us to the following definitions. 
We're going to have our series for a sub n. Could be positive or minus values in here. If I take the series for the absolute value of a sub n, that converges. Then we're going to say that series for a sub n is absolutely convergent, which means it will converge whether you have the signs in there or not. If you throw away the signs, it's still going to converge. If the series for a sub n converges, but the series for absolute value a sub n diverges, meaning I throw away the signs, and then suddenly I change from converging to diverging, then we'll call that conditionally convergent. Examples, we'll take 1 over n with the alternation, or natural log of n over n with the alternation. If you take the signs out, those are both going to diverge. 1 over n, that'll fail because we have the p-test with p equal to 1. And then natural log of n over n is going to fail by the integral test. So if you do the integral of natural log of x over x from 1 to infinity, you'll see that that diverges. So the series is going to diverge also. All right, conditionally convergent. They converge with the signs, but they fail to converge if you take the signs away. If I take alternation of 1 over n squared, then notice this definitely converges. And if I take the signs away, they converge also. So that's going to be absolutely convergent. Okay, here it'll be a p-test with p equal to 2. And then here, again, we'll have both of them converging. Throw away the signs. You're just looking at a geometric series with r equal to 1 half. Absolute value of 1 half is a half, which is less than 1. So that's a convergent geometric series. So here's a weird fact. If I have a conditionally convergent series, I can rearrange the terms of the series to get any sum that I want. So I won't show you how to do that, but I will show you that by rearrangement, I can get a sum that's different from the one we're expecting. So let's take a look at this. So let's take a look at the alternation of 1 over n and going from 1 to infinity. Okay, that we saw before, that's going to go to 0.693, and I'll call that s. Okay, that's also equal to natural log of 2. We'll see that later when we do power series. So I'll write out the first eight terms of this. And the way I'm going to collect my series as follows. What we want to try to do is get fractions where we have 1 over each even number. We'll also have to set things up so that I get minus signs over the alternating even numbers. So let's see how we do that. So I'm going to start with 1 minus a half gives me a half. Then I'm going to jump to the minus a quarter, put that in with the minus sign. Then I'm going to want a 1 sixth, so I can get that by a 1 third minus a 1 sixth. Gives me a 1 sixth. Then I need a minus sign again, so I'm going to jump up to the minus 1 eighth. Bring that in. Our next one would be 1 fifth times 2, which is going to be 1 tenth. And we'll get that from 1 fifth minus a tenth. And you notice, if you're keeping track of all the numbers we're using, it's going to exhaust everything in the list as we start moving out with that pattern. So what have I done? Well, I could factor a 1 half out of this, and that's going to be 1 half times my original series. So the sum for this is going to be just 1 half s. Okay, definitely not equal to s. 